So here we are in central Poland. The year is 1807. And having defeated the Prussians the previous year at the twin battles of Jena Auschwitz, the French are pursuing their erstwhile allies, the Russians. They come across this um, a cavalry encounter, have scouted ahead, and they're wondering what's going on in this village here. But there are Russian forces in the area. So let's see who will emerge victorious. Will it be the pursuing French, or will the Russians manage to hold them off for just long enough? So these are the first of our two forces, the dastardly French, this time commanded by General Dan himself. Starting on the table is on the left here is a light cavalry brigade. As I said, they are they're scouting the terrain, trying to catch up with the retreating Russians. We've got two regiments of Hussars and a regiment of Bavarian Chevalier at the front. And they are commanded by Napoleonic figure, General Antoine Lasalle himself at the head of his troops there. Then in support, there are three brigades of infantry. We're going to use uh, three battalions to a brigade here. We've got the light at the front. We've got the uh, two brigades of line infantry behind them. And the two brigades of line infantry are each supported by a battery of cannons. They're a little bit overrepresented by the artillery, but hey, whatever. We've got our brigade commanders for each of those, and they are all under the command of General Junot, who wasn't actually in the 1807 campaign, but uh, yeah, whatever, who cares? He's cool, he's a good model, and uh, he is from Gringo 40s. In fact, I would even go as far as to say he is a lovely model. So that's the French that will be commanded by General Dan. Let's go on to their opponents, the Russians. So here are the Russians. They are light in infantry, but they are heavy in cavalry. And I mean that both in numbers and in weight. At the back here, we have the starting formation, a light cavalry formation, consisting of a unit of hussars and two units of Cossacks with some horse artillery support. They are led by Yaman, Yaman Platov. There he is, with his two comely Cossack ladies. Then we've got uh, three battalions, uh, sorry, three brigades of Russian infantry. We've got a uh, one of three line battalions we've got a grenadier one so that's got the pavlovs at the front and then we've got a mixed one of jaegers one battalion of line and one battalion of opal cheni at the front there these are ably supported by some heavy artillery two uh two well sorry one medium-sized battery one large battery there and then to support it all we've got the heavy cavalry here we've got one regiment of karaziers and two regiments of dragoons so that is the russians let's see how deployment goes and let's see how they fare against general dan in command of the french so these are the deployment positions the russians have scattered their light cavalry out we've got the hussars on the right the large unit of cossacks in the middle supported by the cossack artillery the santa cannon as i call it and we've got a small unit of cossacks galloping through the village over here on the far side, General Dan has mirrored my deployment. He's got his two regiments of hussars on each flank with the Chevalier in the middle. Now remember, all of these are light cavalry units, so they all have the Marauder special rule, meaning that it doesn't matter how far away they are from their commanders, they'll still be, uh, be ordering on their normal sizes. Now, four commands in this game. The Russian infantry commanders will all be strategy rating seven. The French will all be strategy rating eight. However, the light cavalry commanders, we've got General LaSalle, he will be a nine, there he is over there, and Platov, he will also be eight, uh, sorry, not also eight, he's eight, the same as the French, but he will have plus one when he's ordering Cossacks, so, you know, that makes him effective leadership nine. So, that's the deployment, the infantry are going to be coming on later, so let's see how the first turns roll out. We're going to roll to see who goes first, we don't normally do this actually. We normally have an obvious attacker and defender, but this is a meeting engagement, and the Russians, to see if they go first, they have rolled a six. Ah, oh, the Tsar himself. The Frenchies roll a three. Maha! So it's first, first victory to the Russians. Let's hope it's not the last one as well. So there wasn't much action at the end of turn one. The French moved forward. The Russians set to charge. Now, this is a special order that all cavalry units can do that came out of Clash of Eagles. And basically what happens is these two Cossack regiments were ready that if this unit charged them, 
then the other one will be able to charge them in the flank. So as it is, Dan's gone for the small unit in the village, then the normal size unit is going to be able to charge those hussars in the flank. Now I think Dan's hoping that his Chevalier can come and help them out, so they may be able to, but they're also going to get fired at by the cannon if they traverse it when they come in. So let's see how it goes as uh, Dan does his role for the Bavarians, I assume. Okay. So yeah, no, that's plenty in there. Now the cannon gets to fire as he goes across. And it's a hit six, which is a disorder, of course. So that is unfortunately a morale test for those Bavarian Chevalier being disordered by artillery. Which they explode. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for, <laughs> so for those of you not, not following along, uh, this cavalry unit here, they declared their counter charge against the French Hussars, so they're going to be able to do that. Dan then rolled to charge his Bavarian Chevalier to counter these guys, so they would then have become two one-on-one -on -one shots. Now because he was going across the front of this cannon, to where the uh, the Cossacks are now. The cannon gets to make a shot. It's called a traversing shot. They hit roll a six, which is a morale test for those Bavarians because they were uh, disordered from, closing, uh, from artillery. He rolled his morale test and he rolled a three, meaning that, that battalion did not, oh, sorry, that regiment did not like the idea of being hit by that cannon. So they are now Oskis off the table. So, a, a, a unusual turn for the French there. I think that may put Dan possibly on the back foot a little. Let's see. I think he's going to go with his hussars. I hope you realise that I get to traversing fire you again. It's not once per turn. So. Okay. A 10. They do not fancy it. They have seen what happened to their Bavarian brethren. And they decided that that Cossack cannon over there, the Santa cannon, was just far too deadly for them to manage. So that's a pretty good job as well, because those hussars were also set to counter charge. But there we go, that is the end of French turn two. Uh, well, sorry, no, they're French turn movement. So let's go into the combat phase. So here we go with the cavalry combat here. We're gonna roll for Dan's hussars first. They roll six dice. They would normally need fours to hit. They're at plus one because they charge. They are, however, at minus one because they've been engaged in the flank. Now, half of his attacks must go forward and he can choose to split the other half however he wishes he can put them all forward or he can put one two or three to the side yeah yeah they're a small unit okay so he's doing three on the small unit forward that's three hits they're very angry these hussars and one hit sideways. So it saves for the Cossacks. The Cossacks don't have a great save. They've only got five plus. So for the three on the small units, they make none of those. Ugh. Even added together, they would have only made one. And on the flank... Oh, just one on the flank. Oh, just one. So I'll roll that again. There you go. So these guys take three. So that is one excess casualty on them. Let's hope I win this combat. So the Cossacks, the uh, small unit has three attacks. The, la the normal size unit has five. So that's eight altogether. Now these are charging, so they're hitting on threes. So I'll get them in a shot here. Uh, ooh, pretty good. Uh, do Cossacks have tough fighter, he asked himself. No, alas not. Uh, so that's a pretty good going though, that's seven hits. Now they are lancers, so it's minus one to the cavalry save. Two if you're infantry, so he's saving on a five. He's got two fives there, not bad, but he takes five casualties. So it makes a difference twice there, and he's two over, he takes five casualties. So the Russians took three, the French took five, so it's a break test for the French at minus two. Uh, that's a three down to one, so the French hussars disappear as well, meaning that the French light cavalry are now a broken brigade. Oh dear, Dan. Oh dear. So, a surprisingly effective countercharge from the Cossacks there mean that the French light cavalry are now in severe trouble. However, 
the uh, the small Cossack regiment there, they are shaken. So I do get to do my overrun moves. I'm going to move backwards, and the shaken unit apps, uh, actually has to move backwards. But I'm not going to move backwards very far. I'll be back at the end of the turn and show you where they've gone to. So once again, the overconfidence of the French has let them slip into the the claws of the crafty General Matvey Platov. He didn't get to become Ataman of the Cossacks because he was a fool, and those French are ruining the day. Those, those Bavarian cavalry, really, really unfortunate. It's one of the problems with black powder. In Hail Caesar, that wouldn't have happened, actually. And I think there may be room for house ruling there. But uh, yes, no, no, a solid uh, turn two for the Russians, and turn three is when we're going to start rolling for infantry. So let's see if they are going to turn up. There is no particular mission in this. It's just to uh, just to kill each other, really. So the uh, the Russians have scored two. The French have scored. Well, actually, no. We'll do it. We'll do it. Two for a destroyed regiment. One for a shaken one. So the the Russians are on four. The French are on one. So uh, yeah, it's, it's it's still all to play for. So the Russians have moved forward. The infantry are rolled forward. They rolled an 11, so no infantry this turn. The French is ours because they're in a broken brigade. They can't advance towards the enemy. But uh, I, they can still do stuff. I'm not entirely sure what, to be honest. I'm sure Dan can think of something cunning to do with them, though, as is his want. So uh, it's over to Dan. What are you going to do, Dan? He's going to be able to roll for his infantry this turn as well. He does have a brigade of three battalions of infantry, which could pull his nuts out the fire. Okay, that's what I like to see. Confident there. Not. I'm going to roll to see if the infantry brigade can come on. He's just doing it. Juno would be proud. Okay. Okay. The cavalry may need to shuffle over if he does that, but uh, that's fine. It will. Uh, we'll sort it out when we get to it. So um, yeah, what on a three? They definitely can. So we'll be back after we've deployed the infantry. So the French infantry have stormed onto the battlefield, supporting the Austrians, presumably, uh, the Austrians, what am I talking about? Supporting the French, it's because Dan's playing the enemy, I just automatically say Austrians. <laughs> supporting the French hussars, presumably they're, they're marching over the fallen bodies of the uh, Bavarian Chevalier, the, the single cannon of which killed all of them. I just, I just want to rub it in. Um, but uh, yeah, so not a huge amount happened there. The uh, Platov rallied the uh, the small unit there. I'm still out of range of the cannon, so I should take the smoke off. Really, the Santa cannon is yet to uh, yet to have a, have its follow up tour. The uh, controversial second album is in the works, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yes. Yeah, so there we are. The uh, the Russian infantry nowhere to be seen, and the French infantry have made the field already. I, uh, the French could still turn this round. It's definitely not in the bag for the Russians yet. <laughs> so that's the end of the French turn five, I believe. Yeah, it must be, because infantry have been on for two turns now. Oh yeah, so turn four, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the line infantry have moved forward form line, as the name suggests, the lights have stayed in column due to a, uh, a close uh, command roll. But unfortunately, Dan blundered with his third line battalion and then rolled a two on the blunder table, so he moved back one. We've said that the Hussars can perform reactively, so they will be able to counter charge, although probably not in that position because the fences are in the way. But um, yeah, so we, rather than just make them completely useless, we've decided that they can perform reactively. The French, as you can see from the smoke, opened fire, causing one casualty each on the Hussars and the Cossacks. So Platov may have to start pulling those guys back, or maybe do something a little bit more exciting with them in his turn. But that's the end of turn five. Let's see if this Russian infantry can finally bother turning up, or if all their, uh, their if they're still doing. I don't know what, what, even what Russian infantry do. But uh, let's see if they can turn up in time. He's now moved within range of the deadly Santa cannon. So who knows what that's going to do to his tightly packed infantry columns. But we're about to start turn six. Let's see how he goes. So we cut in here as the <laughs> General Platov ordered both units of cavalry to fall back. 
and uh, he rolled a nine. So we said he had plus one to his strategy rating against Cossacks. So that was good enough for them, but the Hazards it wasn't. So we've counted that as a failed order, which meant that the Santa Cannon, I call it the Santa Cannon because this guy here, he looks like Santa. So that's why I call it the Santa Cannon, if anyone's wondering. So um, <laughs> it fires at the French Light Infantry. Needing a six, and it rolled a six. Disordering the infantry. Now they did save the uh, the hit, <laughs> but just for pure comedy hilarity, for me anyway. Dan looks far less amused than me. The uh, the uh, they are disordered for the next turn. Two battalions of Russian infantry finally decided to turn up, but again using the Russian special rules, I can't order a br full brigade. Only different battalions from the same regiment. And here we can see two battalions of the Kiev Musketeers leading the way to uh, take on the dastardly French. <laughs> in, <laughs> in an absolute moment of complete madness, the Santa Cannon again <laughs> borrows a six to hit the light infantry. This time General Dan failed his save and <laughs> they've taken their first casualty. Now, not much happened in Dan's sixth, uh, fifth turn, rather. Uh, the infantry battalion there moved forward. He caused another casualty on the Hussars, and uh, I managed to rally that off with Platov. I've done in my turn six. Well, I won't do my turn six. We'll do it at the end, because I'm kind of getting out of sync here. So um, we'll do General Dan's turn six. Let's see if the French can start bringing it. So the French have reordered their line a little bit. The line battalion here moving some of their troops into the woods. We decided that that's a mixed formation. That does keep them safe from the Cossacks over here who have moved to outflank the French line. The Russian musketeers advanced, but the third battalion of that brigade still refuses to come on. So that's a bit annoying. So what can the Russians do? It looks like they have the initiative, but can I maximize it? The Hussars have redeployed from here. I've moved back over here. Remember we said that they can still do reactive moves and they are set to charge. But as it is, I wouldn't be able to charge into the woods with that cavalry anyway. So let's see how it goes. The Russians are gonna roll for their next infantry brigade. Uh, this is turn seven now, uh, but the French are gonna be rolling for their next one too. So let's see if the Russians can turn the screw while they still have the advantage. I'm going to cut in live here and I'm going to absolutely jinx myself. Here the Santa Cannon is going to fire once more. It needs a six. Can it make it four out of four? Let's see. I'm not going to be able to. No, oh, it's a four, which is a miss this time. The, <laughs> those French light infantry have fi finally found kill. Yeah, I think we're all a little bit disappointed by it. But uh, yeah, so that's it. The Russians have moved up. But we'll be back at the end of the turn to do a summary. I just wanted to cut it live for the, uh, the cannon fire. So Dan brings on his aggressive French columns there, firing one shot each into the Cossacks. We said that because they're in the wheat, they were minus one to hit. Dan does not care. He cares not. A double six later means that these guys are both shaken, because I failed both my saving throws, and disordered. So it was a morale test. I actually cheated and thought he was at minus one. Uh, that should have been at minus two, really. Doesn't make a difference. I rolled a five. So that unit explodes. So a strong turn from the French there. They uh, destroyed the small unit of Cossacks over on the far side there with two fantastic shots. The, uh, the troops in the middle here, they opened fire and they caused a casualty on each of the two Kiev Musketeer battalions. Firing at the Hussars, they didn't manage to inflict any casualties on them, but not a bad effort from the French. I think this turn, however, we might see some Russian charges. So the French stormed into the Russian lines. The Russians caused no casualties with their closing fire, but they did disorder the French. So let's see how this turn, this vital turn of combat goes. The French charge, they roll first. They're normally hitting on threes, but it's down to fours because of the disorder. That makes a huge difference. Four hits. The Russians attack back. They're hitting on fours. 
Oh dear. Blech. Terrible. Zero hits, but they do have to fight her. So they get to reroll one. Which is a one. So even more pathetic. So that's two saving throws for the Russians. That really was very poor dice rolling there. Oh, sorry, four. Four, sorry, my, my mistake. It was two fails, wasn't it? Uh, three of those go through, which shakes the Russians. Oh dear. They have very much lost that combat. Let's see if they can stand. No, they can't. They explode. Having destroyed the units in close combat, Dan now needs to roll see if he can capture the colours on a six. He does. Oh, nearly. But they managed to get away. Well, after that shocking combat, let's see how the middle one goes. In this case, the Russians are disordered, but they won the last round of combat, so they back to hitting on fours. They have a tough fighter. For three hits this turn. Not great, but uh, could have been worse, as, as we saw earlier on. The French attacking map, they are shaken, so they're hitting on fives. They are absolutely mad for it with five hits there. Great rolling from Dan. So, can the Russians do any saves? Let's see, four plus. Uh, ooh, uh, four of them go through. Dear, it's not looking good for them. Four. Oh, sorry, um, yeah, it was three hits at fours. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one goes through for the French, but having caused four casualties and having more supports, the French win that combat. So, the Russians, they are... Uh, how many did I fail then? Okay, so I'm one over my stamina. I'm at minus two because I'm also disordered. They explode as well. Oh dear. Shocking behaviour. Well, that's a terrible turn for the Russians there. The French have definitely, definitely managed to pull this one back. That's some dreadful dice rolling in hand-to-hand -hand combat from the Russians. So an absolutely massive turn for the French there. Destroying both of those Russian battalions and breaking that Russian brigade. And it now means that there are six French battalions, five of which are still fully operational. That turns operational. Uh, meaning that the uh, the Russians are really having their backs to the wall again. We've got three battalions of infantry over here. But only two of them can act as normal. The other one is rather in trouble. But we're going to do the same as we did with the cavalry for the French. It can be reactive. It's just not going to be able to move towards the enemy. So let's see if the Russians can pull this back. Let's see if they can bring up some more elite troops. And maybe it'll uh, it'll go okay in the end. Let's see. So the French, fresh from their victories on the French right, have stormed forward into the reserve Russian brigade, which managed to form line with the Jaegers and the Paskov uh, Musketeers. Let, let's let's go with them for now. So we're going to roll out the combat. Dan Charge, so he's going to roll first. My closing fire caused no casualties and no disorder. Dan rolls for three hits there. So, the Russians, let's see if they can actually overcome their terrible dice rolling and maybe do something half decent this time. Uh, no, well, yeah, I can't complain, it's 50-50. Oh, four hits from the Rushkies. So the Russians are saving three times on a four plus. Two go through, the French are saving on a three. Two go through as well. So, it's 2-2. Two, two. The Russians are uh, supported to one flank. The French are supported to the flank and rear. So despite the Russians probably coming off slightly better in that combat, they lose the fight. So let's see what happens to them. Oh, that's a six. And a one, they love it. They carry on fighting. Whew, that was, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. With, with my rolling so far, that was a, a concerning roll. So with that drawn combat, that's the end of the turn. I say drawn, it was sort of drawn. What happened in this one? Well, General Platov got his Cossacks all the way from here, all the way round to behind the French artillery. He's managed to unlimber and face them in their turn. The Hussars set to counter charge if my Cossacks decide to go after the artillery. In the middle here, as you saw, it was a bit of a stalemate. The Russians took two casualties. I'll need to add those on in a bit. But uh, that was all that happened over here. The brigade commander failed his order, and this unit, I think you know, that they've had enough troubles as it is. They're just they're replenning, replenning the ammunition, just chilling out a little bit. So let's see how the next turn goes for the Russians. It's going to be at least one more turn before the Grenadiers can advance, but let's see how it goes. The big man, Marshal Kutuzov himself, is on the field. Let's see if his inspiring presence 
can help the Russians turn back the French tide. Well, despite me playing the Red Army Anthem for my, for my troops as uh, the French attacked, they actually rolled five out of six hits, but they also took five out of six casualties in return. It wasn't great. The French have pushed through. They have now charged the... Uh, the Opolcheni here. Now the Opolcheni have this the freshly raised special rule. This is the first time they've really been called on to do anything in this game. So I'm going to roll the dice on the freshly raised table. That is this table here. So one is bad, two is really bad, uh, three is equally as bad as two, four, five, six, okay. Six is amazing. A three. So a three is they need sixes to hit for shooting in hand-to-hand -hand combat for this turn only. Yeah, that's terrible. Now they do get plus one to hit for closing fire. Uh, oh no, 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 they don't, sorry, no, no, that's the other unit, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so we've also had this unit as well. Now I should cut in to say, that Dan ordered them uh, all the way from back here, just to sort of hang out. I think, what do you want to do, change formation or something? to reform and Oh, to reform space the Cossacks, that's right. But he blundered and they moved three moves forward, straight into the Jaegers. But we're going to start off with the combat over here with the militia. Dan uh, is going to roll his sixth... Oh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, did you charge this turn? Okay, you initiate a charge, so I do get to stand and shoot. I'm going to use Austrian dice for this, because they're the ones I've got next to my hand. Now, I do need sixes to hit, but really, I'm fishing for sixes anyway. I get the plus one, so I need fives, but sixes are what I'm really after. There's a six. That's what we like to see. One hit. Which is saved by the French, but they are disordered. That's crucial, because it means they're now hitting me on fours. So Dan's going to roll his six attack dice. He is the charger. And he needs fours to hit me. He gets three hits. It would have been um, five had I not done that cheeky disorder. So that's uh, that's not bad at all. I believe my Opal Cheney have a four plus save. That's not bad. And they fight with five attacks in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So let's see how well they do. They do not have to fight though. So see how they do. Uh, oh, they're a bit, bit keen. They get four hits. So, oh, yes. As Dan points out, I'm hitting on sixes. Ah, oh, god damn it, which is a real shame. So, sorry, how many times did you hit me? Three. That would have been a great roll. Uh, they save two of them. One of them goes through, so I do lose the combat. Let's see what happens to them. A ten. They carry on fighting. I didn't even need the priest reroll. But what's going on here? So, there we go. So, one hit on the Opal Cheney. Now, for a bit of extra tension, when the um, the French stormed in here, I need to get some uh, closing fire smoke going on. There we go. The Jaegers did their closing fire. I rolled them in this, in this black box. Turn it upside down. I haven't seen them yet. So, let's reveal what the closing fire was. Remember, I need threes to hit. And sixes are the ones I'm really looking for. Let's see. Oh, three hits, no sixes. That's disappointing. Oh, yes, no, it is minus one because I'm Russian. Thank you very much, Dan, for reminding me. I always forget these things. Uh, and I get to re-roll because I am Jaegers. I'm sharpshooter. It's a four, so that is a hit. Dan saves them both anyway. So now we fight into hand-to-hand -hand combat. These guys are to fighter, but Dan gets to roll his attacks first. So this is the Jaegers against the, 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 rather, um, the rather impetuous French unit for three hits from the French. So hit me on threes there. The Russians fight back, hitting on fours. They are tough fighters. Oh dear, even with tough fighters, still only two hits. My dice wrong has been dreadful in this game. Let's see if the French can save. They save both of theirs. Uh, was it three on me? Yeah, the Jaegers. Two go through, say so lose the combat. Please don't explode. They don't, they carry on fighting. So that's the end of, I don't even know what turn we're on now. Is it like nine, 10, something like that? So in this next turn, we'll be rolling to see if the Russian Grenadiers will finally make their acquaintance with the French. So no, not, a, not a great turn for the Russians. Not a great turn for the French either, that one. Fairly, um, fairly innocuous for both sides. Let's see how it goes. I do still have that cheeky heavy cavalry brigade yet to come on for the French. Uh, sorry, for the Russians. So let's see how that goes. Also, we've got your boy Platov back here. 
He can charge the rear of either of these units, and he, that's exactly what he's going to do. It's going to be painful. So let's see how it goes as we approach Russian maybe turn 10. So we're going to move into the combat phase now. The Cossacks charge the rear of that French battalion. So they're French, not aren't they? Uh, these guys are French here. Napoleon got to be on it on there. Oh no, this guy, he's the, the leader of the Cossacks. Where's Captain yeah. Major Sharp? <laughs> he's not in this one, we do normally have him. But this is uh, Russians and French. Major Sharp. Not this time, not this time. You have to come next time. You uh, yeah, you know what, next time Sharp's on, not only will you have to pop in, but you'll have to roll his dice as well, mate. So you've, you've done it now. So. No, don't roll dice because you'll charge. I'll see, I might see him next week. Yeah. Well, exactly. You never know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, see you a bit, mate. So the, um, we'll start off with the combat over here. We've got the Opal Cheney versus the French. Now, the Opal Cheney no longer needs sixes to hit, thankfully. But <laughs> I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. So, uh, did I take one or two hits last turn? I didn't want to tell you one, alright, I thought I took two. You could have told me two then, I believe you. Uh, so, the French did win the combat though, so they're hitting normally on threes. The, uh, but the French are disordered, so they're hitting on fours. So, Dan rolls his dice here for two measly hits. Pathetic! The angry, furious Opal Cheney still smart. Oh, actually, no, Smolensk's like five years away, isn't it? So they're still they're still pretty angry. I don't even know why the Opal Cheney are here, to be honest, but they are. So <laughs> they roll. To be honest, I've cheated there. I roll one extra dice. So I'm going to roll this again. On a four plus, it's a hit. It's a hit. So I get one hit. You better save this or you lose the combat. Yay! He doesn't lose the combat. The combat is a draw. Neither of us are shaken. Huh? Oh, I've got two saves. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I forgot about that. I could do it. No, no, it'll be a draw, even if I make them both. I do make them both! But it's still a draw, so we carry on fighting there. That's a great result from the Opal Cheney, which shouldn't be here. So, I reckon that was the exhortations of the priest. Where is he in the front rank? There he is, look at that crazy bad boy. So he is from the Assault Group. I always get people asking me where he's from. He's from the Assault Group. He used to be free, but you had to order a certain amount to get him. Now you can buy him, but you don't have to order the certain amount. So it's kind of 50-50. This combat here, the French, uh, sorry, the Russian Hussars, charged the flank of the unit that was engaged with the Jaeger. So the French get to go first, because they won the combat last turn. They've been contacting the flanks, so they're now hitting me on fours. At least three of their attacks must go forward. Dan gets to decide where the other three go. Oh, he's going half and half. You like it. You love to see it. So the three straight forward at the Jaeger. For two hits, because he won the last round of combat, so he's hitting on threes. Oh, sorry, he's hitting on fours, he's minus one. Thank you, Dan. He's too honest, his general, Dan. Too honest to play French. So. <laughs> That's why I, I have to cheat. So. <laughs> it's about time I won one battle, isn't it? Let's be honest. I don't think I'm going to win this one, though. And I won on the side. So I'm going to do them as they lie. So as they lie means the dice that's closest to the Jaegers will be them. The dice that's closest to the Hazars will be them. So now that's the Jaeger one. That's the Hazar one. So the Jaeger one is saved. The Hazar one goes through. So the Hazars roll six dice. And the uh, I'm gonna have to roll these again, I'm afraid. So the Hazars roll six dice, they need threes to hit. Oh, brutality! They get six hits, they don't even need the reroll. Or oh, oh, the Red Army National Anthem, it would appear. The Jaegers, they roll to fighter. That is a mighty uh, 11 hits out of 12 on the French. They are in deep, deep doo-doo here. They're saving on a four plus. They are still in column, but they are minus one for being contacted in the flank. Dear. Ugh, three more, so that's seven altogether. They've taken no casualties so far. So four excess, so at least you test at minus four. So, uh, so that becomes a five. They fall back two moves and become disordered. I'm, we're just going to pause it and we'll pop back when we've moved those guys back. Actually, oh, there you go. We should have done that at the end of the combat phase, really, to be fair. 
but uh, it doesn't matter. We, we've done it now. So uh, I'll move my uh, my victorious units uh, when we've done that. I think the cavalry may uh, may have to follow up on this one. Uh, and then we come here. The Cossacks charged the French Leger in the rear. So the French get to attack with six attacks, but they are needing fives to hit me. They are at minus one. So let's see how it goes for them. Actually, sorry, no, 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 that's a complete lie. Sorry, sorry, Dan, I'm lying to you. You only get three attacks, because half of them oh, have to go oh, forward. So, yeah, sorry, mate. No, 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 apologies, that was a really good roll as well. So, apologies, you only get three attacks, so no hits. I do apologise for that, Dan. So, he said, <laughs> no, 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 really sorry about that. The Cossacks attack on hitting on threes. They get four hits. The French are at minus one to their save. They are in line. This is why you don't put French in line, ladies and gentlemen. So they are saving on fives. Or two. Or two, I think it was, f yes, so for two. So they are shaken, um, and they are supported to one flank, but they took two casualties. So they lose the combat. So it's just a, a straight morale test here. A 10, they carry on fighting. They are still facing the other way, though. So that's the end of maybe Russian turn 10. Uh, I'm going to reef, I'm going to follow up with the cavalry, actually. The cavalry are going to carry on into this unit here. And the Jaegers are going to move up and they are going to support the uh, the battalion. They're actually going to move up behind the battalion here. And they're going to move to support them to the rear. There. So that's the end of Russian turn 10. I think we're probably going to call this the last turn. It's getting late. And the uh, that was the uh, the bar manager I was chatting to earlier on. I think he's uh, he's come around and collected the glasses three times now, so I think he's ready for us to go. But uh, this is going to be the final turn. Maybe a cheeky quick one afterwards. Let's see how it goes. So a better turn for the Russians that turn. The Opolcheni they managed to hold their ground with the Jaegers in support. Although they took another casualty, so did the French. The French now shaken. The Opolcheni, due to their cheeky Russian stamina, not quite so much. The Russian cavalry, they were the superstars of this turn. The Hussars finishing off the unit that they'd pursued, and the Cossacks finishing the units that they charged into the rear of. It must be said, the Cossacks rolled a one to see if they captured the eagle. So not only did they not catch the eagle, I don't think they even know what an eagle is. But uh, never mind. So in my turn, the Cossacks are going to initiative charge into the rear of this shaken battalion here. The Hussars are going to charge into the rear of that support infantry battalion there. I'm going to roll for the Grenadiers, although this is going to be the final turn. So do the Grenadiers come on? On a nine, they do not. So the Grenadiers stay off the table. I've not even thought about the, uh, the medium and heavy cavalry yet. But uh, so that's the Russian moving. The shooting is going to be non-existent. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really going to shoot at anything. I've only got the cannons here. Uh, oh, I should say as well, if anyone's wondering what happened to the Santa cannon, it moved on to the hill here, where it was going to be able to lay down withering fire support across to the French here. I rolled to unlimit the gun, rolled a six, and went off the table. <laughs> uh, double six, and went off the table with the blunder. So that's what happened to the Santa cannon. To be fair, I think the Cossacks that manned the gun went for some very well-deserved vodka. I, th I think we can, we can give them that. Very well done for those guys. But that's the movement. I'm going to uh, just tidy some things up, and then we'll do the combat, and then we'll go into the final French turn. You can tell from how echoey my voice is, everyone else has left now, so we really are running up against the time restraints. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we very quickly rolled the combats through here. The Cossacks, with the extra two attacks from Marshal Platov, managed to destroy the French battalion here. The Hussars managed to destroy the French battalion there. Oh, I, I should have rolled. Did I capture the eagle here? No. Did I capture the eagle over there? No. Although on a five, they're actually finding out what an eagle is. Um, the combat here with the Opolcheni, both units took two casualties. Both of them rolled a five, which meant that they bounced back from each other. The fact that that French brigade is now broken, this French brigade has been destroyed. There is still a full French brigade here and another one yet to come on. The Russians still have their grenadiers and their heavy cavalry to come on. So I would suggest that this is a win for the Russians. However, it's not certainly not been a convincing win. 
And I think that probably tactically it's a Russian victory. It's a but defensive, defensive victory. Yeah, I think a defensive victory is a good way of putting it. They, uh, they were being pursued by the French, and certainly this French division will not be pursuing them much longer. I think that's, that's safe to say. But that said, it was a very swingy game. The, uh, the ridiculousness that happened with the cavalry very early on. The Russians had the initiative. I tried to push forward. I probably should have charged a turn sooner. But I didn't that allow the French to bring up reinforcements. Dan brilliantly played as always. He managed to reinforce his line, turn it around. And I think the key actually was his unit that, that blundered. That blunder there, let them push through. I, I agree, a completely I'm, undamaged I'm, I'm, unit I'm, blundering. As I, yeah, it really did. I think the, the, the use of Cossacks moving all the way round the back of the French army and then coming through was, uh, w was something that really helped the Russians. I think it may seem a bit strange. You might be like, oh, well, you know, that's a bit silly. But that is what the Cossacks did. The Battle of Halesburg, the Battle of Borodino, of course. That's the kind of thing that they really like to do. But they wouldn't have really started there if it was historical. They would have come on like kind of sideways. Yeah, that, that's a fair point. They may have come on from the side of the battlefield. It's just a bit of a warhammer, uh, warhammer? A bit of a wargaming tradition they started on the table. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the battle. Sorry we had to rush it a little bit towards the end. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. It's not For me, it's been really nice to see the Russians on the table. I love my Russian army. And it's nice to see them. And uh, I just want to thank you guys all for watching. And I will see you guys next time.